The U.S. and other countries have committed hundreds of millions of dollars in food aid for refugees in East Africa. Much of that goes to the world's largest refugee camp in Dadaab, Kenya, where people are also doing whatever they can to feed themselves. Erica Hill is in Dadaab with more on that story for us this morning. Erica, good morning. Hey, Chris, good morning to you. It's important to remember that so many of the more than 400,000 refugees who now call Dadaab home came here because they were fleeing famine in many places, but, but chiefly Somalia. And the latest numbers that we have is that on average of the new arrivals, about 20% of the children arrive here malnourished. Food is obviously a major concern on a daily basis. Care International, which handles the food distribution here in the camps, though, is actually trying to increase the options for the people who live there and trying to grow a bit of variety. One look at Dadaab's scorched earth, and it's no surprise, only the hardiest plants and animals survive here. But slowly, some green is sprouting in the camps. What are you growing here? <laughs> Okra, leafy greens, a micro garden grown in grain sacks, which require less water, essential in the drought ravaged area. CARE International taught 3,000 refugees to garden last year. At first, they didn't, they didn't know like uh, if this thing could work. Yeah. They didn't believe that uh, we can do farming in this place. The aid organization estimates there are now some 1,800 gardens like Rukia's in the camps. 1,800 for more than 400,000 refugees who struggle to get any vegetables into their diet. Especially during drought, it's very difficult to get it from this place, and when it comes, it's very expensive. Maintaining a garden like Rukia's isn't easy. Just hauling enough water is literally back-breaking work. Rukia says a cart would change that, but for now, some of her eight children help carry the 15 cans of water she needs each day to keep these plants alive. Joahara farmed in Somalia before she fled four years ago corn, onions, even tobacco, until Al-Shabaab forced her to stop, claiming the Quran forbid tobacco. Today, she's one of about 80 women working in CARE's seven greenhouses at the Dadaab camp. So you have spinach, yeah, have green spinach. peppers, hot peppers. Hot peppers, yeah. And at one point you had tomatoes as well. Yeah, tomatoes as well and uh, kale. And kale. Yeah. And you said sometimes there's okra. Yeah, we have okra. They keep some of the produce they grow for their families and sell the excess. She tells me her children love the vegetables, but she's concerned the project is too small and that it won't last. A sentiment shared by the lucky few who keep these greenhouses going. Mm. So we feel we need more greenhouses to bring more products. And the other challenge is that uh, we have very many here, very many people. The women you see working in those greenhouses are actually some of the most vulnerable women in the camps. They are single mothers and victims of gender-based violence. And the reason they were given these positions is because it gives them a chance to earn some income and support themselves and their families, Chris. Erica, how many people actually get these vegetables? Sadly, it's small. I mean, this is a start, but it's very small. In each camp, the two greenhouses in each camp, there are probably about 500 people total who will eat some of those vegetables. Now, think about the fact that in each camp, there are more than 100,000 people. And even Rukia, who you saw, she has eight children. So the vegetables she grows can feed her family, but she doesn't have enough left over to sell. Chris? All right, Erica. Nice job out there and uh, safe travels. We look forward to having you back here in New York.